Okay, I want to share with you some wisdom from my favourite guru, Peter Drucker. So, I want to share with you the seven sources of innovation from Drucker's great book, Innovation and Entrepreneurship. So, number one is the unexpected. So, a great example of that is Viagra. So, it was designed as a drug to solve a heart problem and, well, you know what it did. So, Viagra went on to become one of the greatest drug success stories in the last 20 years, but the success came from something that was completely unexpected. Second one is the incongruity. So that's something where reality is different from what everyone sort of acknowledges. So the one I like about that is the shipping container. So the shipping container, a really simple thing, but it's been a key part of unlocking lower cost international trade. Now the incongruity came because everyone assumed that the expensive part of shipping was when the boat was on the water. The reality is the key costs were putting stuff on the boat and taking stuff off the boat. Shipping container made that a whole lot easier, a whole lot easier to sort of mix goods and services and it all arose because someone spotted the incongruity. Third one is process need. So that's where there's a problem with the process and everyone's working around it. So the classic for me is Dropbox. So you remember when Dropbox came out, there'd just recently been an explosion of devices and we were all getting caught with photos and music and documents in different spots. You know, some was on their phone, some was on their desktop. Dropbox solved that problem you know, easily and intuitively. Fourth one is industry or market structure. So the classic for me uh, in that is the Australian car manufacturing industry. So for years we've been building large cars and uh, the market shifted and wanted small cars and uh, the Australian car industry just didn't adapt. Fifth one is demographics. So that's about changes in the, you know, the size or the makeup of a population. So uh, in the Western world, we know that the population is aging. So the proportion of older people is much greater than the proportion of younger people. In the emerging world, it's, it's exactly the opposite. But in the Western world, that's got uh, big implications on people's consuming patterns, the sort of houses they want to live in, where they want to live in, and for governments, it's got a big impact on things such as healthcare. Sixth innovation is, source of innovation is mood or meaning. So that's where the mood of uh, a population is changing. So the classic for me is, is about food. When I was a kid, we celebrated the arrival of Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's. It was, you know, fantastic. Um, now, we've been through a number of waves of different thinking about food. So firstly, you know, fat was evil. Now we're starting to think that carbs and sugar are evil. All of that's got implications for the types of food people want to eat, where they want to eat it, the types of the restaurants they want to go to. So the market is changing. The seventh and final source of innovation is new knowledge. So that's the splitting of the atom, you know, that brand new piece of technology. A lot of people think, seem to think that that new knowledge uh, is the only source of innovation. But really, as you can see, it's, it's only one of seven. So even someone like Steve Jobs really didn't come up with a lot of new knowledge. He was really good at packaging uh, existing technologies, but he was quite good at understanding other things like changes in mood or meaning. So there you have it, Drucker's seven sources of innovation. Um, what I'd like you to do is think about an innovation that you're familiar with and see what is the source of it.